baby. Uh, there is another approach, which is rather than talking about how bad everything is, like eliminating almost all hope, and then we have to act out of some kind of despair, there, there is another possibility, which is maybe the entrepreneurial approach, is to um, emphasize all that can be done, and then just be incredibly practical about it. Because I mean, it's interesting that both of you have this very pessimistic outlook when, when in fact some of the people that, that have made a career out of being pessimistic are actually sort of quite uh, optimistic. <laughs> well, I, I'm not that pessimistic. I think that the, uh, the, the very fact that we had a, a global agreement among every state on globe supported uh, heavily by, finally, by the US and China as the most important players about sustainable development and climate is an optimistic sign. It's a sign that in this world of chaos and potential catastrophes, there is an increasing understanding uh, that we have common interests and we need to make great innovations and great changes in policy. And we have to bind those two things together because if we don't create the right framework, be it in regulations and, sa and taxation for business, we, we cannot be sure that every businessman will do the right thing. We have to make a kind of uh, society framework where it, what is obvious necessary for, uh, under, uh, in the long perspective, for humanity is also the most profitable for the business. That's what we have to do. And that, that takes an interaction between the entrepreneurs, the business life, and the political system. It's a political system that has to put, just to take one example, a high price on coal. Uh, it's very uh, easy. And fossil fuels in general. It's very easy. If nothing to say that agreement on global taxation, yeah, yeah. for instance. Yeah, yeah, of we course. see that, yeah, because yeah, yeah. The, the amount found in Panama was yeah. a fun global yeah. country. But pa Panama was yeah. good, because yeah. it showed how it works, and it created a political momentum to change. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to take... Right, I, I know... I know no, no, to, to, to be fair, and in yeah. the spirit of democratic participation, <laughs> I'm going to take uh, two questions right now, and I'm going I'm to get yeah. whomever wants a chance to respond and, and get back to that comment if necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a comment. Uh, so I'm from New York, yeah. but I have a Danish business partner, so I got to learn a little bit about you guys. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> things like Yenta law and such. So when you mentioned <laughs> pessimism, at first I didn't like that about Danish people, but I feel like that's what gives you guys your charm, that you guys... <laughs> <laughs> no, because if you weren't pessimistic, <laughs> then you would be more like American and you wouldn't get things done. And you guys continue to get things done. So I just wanted to say, I've been teaching about Denmark for like 10 years, I teach geography, mm -hmm. and the idea is like, oh, people can uh, come back to their job after they have cancer, you know, and you can have people that could help take care of your family. And at first, nobody really cared or talked about it too much, but now we have a candidate who yep. is a socialist and independent who talks about Denmark, and even in one of the debates, they said, hey, this isn't Denmark, Hillary Clinton said that. But then she was like, but I love Denmark. <laughs> but the thing is, I think it could be Denmark in 20 years. Yeah. And I think everything that you guys are doing and what you're fighting for and what you're saying, I have a pretty good bullshit detector. And I think everything that you said was like brilliant, both of you, all of you. So I just want to congratulate you for bringing that culture to New York and our world. So I'm going to take that as a very friendly amendment to tonight's conversation. Um, quick questions. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, there are a number of questions to be asked. This is a phenomenal panel. And while uh, Mr. Lukatov is one of the reasons why I left Denmark, uh, Uf is one of the reasons why I want to go back. So seeing you side by side is, is fascinating on a number of levels. Uh, Uf, you're talking about the Apollo program. We need an Apollo program for reinventing our world. The Apollo program went to the moon. What does the win look like uh, from a political standpoint, a cultural, commercial, what, what is a win uh, that we're aiming for? Because there's a lot of doomsday prophecies, but I don't know what we're aiming for. And I'm looking to you two, yeah. and to you two, uh, for some sort of answer to that. That's a really tough question. <laughs> uh, I, I, I will answer it. Uh, but before I do, 
I just have to say to you, Bjarke, that uh, that I totally follow your perspective that we have to uh, create a, a kind of a very hopeful, energetic, fun, challenging culture that uh, really uh, motivates people to do stuff and do good stuff. Uh, so I'm, I understand what uh, what what you're saying. But I also have to take in right now that uh, we had the warmest months in January ever recorded, and we had the warmest months, uh, February, warmest February ever recorded, and we just got the figures uh, two days ago that uh, March is the warmest uh, recorded month ever. So even if there's a lot of good stuff happening, I'm totally, I, I, I totally agree. We also have to be brave enough to see that there's something we have to fix, and uh, that's uh, that's what we just have to do together. And what drives us? What what what, what is the win? If uh, I understood you right, well, I can't say uh, for society or so, but but uh, because I have, I think I've already uh, pointed out some of my. Uh, Ambitions concerning the three top bottom line, blah blah blah, all that stuff. But on a much more personal level, I really want to create a society where people can connect uh, on a much inner, deeper freedom level than th that they do right now. We talk a lot about freedom, but it's um, most of the time it's an outer freedom to buy and to do stuff and so on. But I think uh, what we also have to connect with is a much deeper understanding about free, inner freedom, uh, to be who you are, to create a good society where people are connected uh, in connection with their emotions and feelings and, and uh, desires, and uh, that uh, we created enough safe space where people really can be who they are and live uh, on the highest level of meaningfulness. Uh, for them, of course, I'm not saying uh, we have to live a very different lives, but for that specific person to really unfold their life talent on the highest meaningful level. That's uh, the society I'm heading for. Mm -hmm.